Hello friends, today we are going to discuss important topic aggregate gradation for asphalt mixes. Aggregate gradation is the distribution of particle size in a aggregate mass or a sample of aggregates. This can be expressed as percent of total volume which is of much importance or it can also be expressed as the percent by weight which is easy and a standard practice. Gradation by volume and weight is approximately the same as long as the specific gravities of aggregates of various sizes present in the mix are approximately equal. Gradation is obtained by sieve analysis by determining the total percent passing various sieve sizes and sieve sizes can be as per the design of the mix or the thickness of the layer. Two important terms are generally used. One maximum size of aggregate and another is nominal maximum size of aggregate. ASTM has defined these two sizes. Maximum size is the smallest sieve through which 100% of the aggregate sample particles pass. The maximum particle size in a mixture is important to ensure good performance. If the maximum size is too small, the mix may be unstable and if it is too large, it may create the problem of workability and segregation. Nominal maximum size is the largest sieve that retains some of the aggregates particles but generally not more than 10% by weight. Mixed designations used in the specifications typically use nominal maximum size of aggregate. Gradation has profound effect on mixed performance but the question is what is the best gradation? And it might be reasonable to believe that the best gradation is one that produces the maximum density. The gradation should provide adequate volume for the asphalt binder to occupy and it should promote rapid drainage and resistance to frost action for base and sub base courses. There are several common terms which are used to classify gradation like gap gradient, uniform gradient, aggregate, well graded aggregate or dense graded aggregate. In case of dense graded aggregate, it is the grading which is very close to Fuller's curve or you can say maximum density line curve. Most of the HMA have dense grading of aggregates. Typical curve is near maximum density line but not on it. Now this gradation gives low wire content, low permeability, high stability but it is difficult to compact. The next is gap graded. It is a mix that contains only a small percentage of aggregate particles in the mid size range. There is a gap, there is a gap in the grading. The curve is flat in the mid size range. Some PCC mix design use gap graded aggregate to provide a more economical mix since less sand can be used for a given workability. Here there is no grain to grain contact. Air wires and permeability are moderate, stability is low and this mix is easy to compact and stone matrix asphalt is one typical example of gap graded mix. Open graded mix contains segregation that contains only a small percentage of aggregate particles in the small range. This result in more air wires because there is because there are not enough small particles to fill in the wires between the large particles. The curve is near vertical in the mid size range and flat and near zero in the small size range. Uniformly graded aggregate is the one that contains most of the particles in a very narrow size range. In essence, all the particles are of the same size, the curve is steep and only occupies the narrow size range specified. It provides grain to grain contact. The mix contains high permeability and high wire content and it provides low stability and it is difficult to compact.
although it may not be the best gradation, but a maximum density gradation does provide a common reference. And this is the equation which was given by Fuller's, where small d is the diameter of the sieve size and capital D is the maximum size of aggregate. P is the percent finer than size small d and n is an exponent. And the value of this n was taken 0.5 as per Fuller. In HMA, gradation helps to determine almost every important property including stiffness, stability, durability, permeability, workability, fatigue resistance, uh, frictional resistance and moisture susceptibility. And it is better to keep the gradation curve away from the maximum density line curve due to the following reasons. Number one, the aggregate gradation that follows the maximum density line will have the maximum surface area. And due to this excess surface area, the demand for bitumen will increase and additional bitumen will be required. Wires in mineral aggregate and air wires will be on lower side. And due to this high bitumen content, the mix will have the tendency to compact under load that will ultimately lead to plastic deformation and rutting in the layer. In early 60s, FHWA introduced an aggregate gradation chart which is based on the fuller gradation but it uses an exponent of 0.45 in place of 0.5. Now these equations are found very convenient to determine MDL that is maximum density line and for adjusting aggregate density. Now, this maximum density line is obtained by connecting the lowermost point on the left side to the nominal maximum size of aggregate here on the upper side. For example, for stone matrix asphalt, the gradation suggested in specifications are like this that for seed size 19 millimeter, it should be 100 percent passing, 13.2, 90 to 100 percent passing. Here, maximum size of aggregate is 19 millimeter and nominal size of aggregate is 13.2 millimeter because less than 10 percent will pass through this size and these are the gradient corresponding to maximum density line as per Fuller equation. Now if you plot this on a log scale on x axis and percent passing on y axis now this is the maximum density line and these are the actual gradient or you can say midpoint of the actual grading range. If you plot it on a log on 0.45 curve, if you plot these gradings on 0.45 curve, it will be a straight line that is a maximum density line and the actual grading is below this maximum line. Any grading which is below, it will have open grade mix and therefore it will have very high air wires. For bitumen concrete, gradation for a 90 millimeter nominal size of aggregate is like this. This is the maximum density line, this is a straight line and the actual grading or midpoint grading is very close to MDL, maximum density line. The grading also controls the porosity of the aggregate structure, which in turn controls the permeability. And Westerman in 1998 developed this equation from 47 field core sample taken from asphalt concrete layer. And here the permeability in millimeter per second is related with air wires, n is air wires, and small t here is lift thickness. And as you can see here, air wires is most significant predictor of permeability. For example, if you take 4 cm as the lift thickness T, doubling the air wires from 4 to 8 percent will increase permeability by a factor of 236. And for a mix with 6 percent air wires, if you make it constant and change the lift thickness, for a mix with 6 percent air wires, doubling the lift thickness from 4 to 8 cm will decrease the permeability by a factor of 7.2. However, the weakness of this equation is 
that it does not relate permeability with aggregate radiation. Now another equation which was developed from field samples based on air wires, the uh, wires in mineral aggregate B and A and the coarse aggregate ratio C A here. Now in this equation K is the permeability and N is air wires, C A is coarse aggregate ratio and V M A is wires in mineral aggregate. Now this imp model implies that increasing V M A will reduce the permeability and therefore it will counteract the effect of air wires. Now here it is important to understand definition of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate very correctly. Coarse aggregates and fine aggregates generally uh, they are defined based on a sieve size of 4.75 millimeter or sieve number 4. Coarse aggregate is defined as the material retained on 4.75 millimeter and fine aggregate as the material passing 4.75 millimeter without considering the nominal maximum size of aggregate. But in Bailey method of gradation, coarse and fine aggregate depends upon the nominal maximum size of aggregate that is NMAS. The sieve that separates the coarse and fine aggregates is known as primary control sieve PCS and this is 0 0.22 multiplied by NMAS. Now this 0 0.22 is called the packing factor and NMAS is nominal maximum aggregate size. For example, if nominal maximum aggregate size in a mix is 25 millimeter, then primary control C will be 0 0.22 multiplied by 25 that is 5.5 millimeter. And since the nearest sieve to 5.5 millimeter is 4.75 millimeter, and therefore primary control C for NMS of 25 millimeter is 4.75 millimeter. And in this case, aggregate which are passing through 4.75 millimeter will be fine aggregate. Now, for NMS of 12.5 millimeter, this primary control C will be. 12.5 multiplied by 0.22 that is 2.75 millimeter and again the nearest sieve to 2.75 millimeter is 2.36 millimeter and therefore here the primary control C will be 2.36 millimeter. Aggregate passing through 2.36 millimeter will be fine aggregate and retained on 2.36 millimeter will be coarse aggregate. Now, another important consideration while selecting the aggregate duration is asphalt film thickness. It is important parameter as it controls the selection of gradation of aggregate. Numerous methods are specified to calculate the asphalt film thickness on aggregate particles, but the method given by Edward and V is the most widely used. And generally, an average film thickness of 6 to 8 micron is recommended for dense gradient asphalt mixtures for their good performance in the field. The asphalt film thickness is calculated on effective asphalt content and the surface area of aggregates is determined from the gradation applying the surface area factor. And this table provides you the surface area factor for different size of aggregates. For 4.75 mm and above it is 0 0.41 and it increases as the sieve size reduces. So you can see here that coarse aggregate had very small effect on surface area as compared to fine aggregates. And gradation of the mix can be adjusted to have a reasonable thickness of asphalt thickness. So final words are that aggregate gradation influences almost every important property of HMA including stiffness, stability, durability, permeability, workability and fatigue resistance. The desired gradation for a particular HMA mixture is dependent upon its intended use and desired characteristics, predicted loading, environmental conditions, as well as material, structural, and mix properties. Theoretically, there exists a particular gradation that will produce the maximum density, and this gradation would result in a minimum wire space between the particles and will produce maximum density. But practically an aggregate gradation 
of maximum density is not desirable because a certain amount of wires space is required to provide adequate volume for a spark content or spark binder to occupy. There are two main gradation types categorized by aggregate morphology. They are continuous gradation and gap gradation and three types of air wires namely dense gradation, open gradation and semi-open gradation. If the target air wires are 3 to 6 percent, it is called dense open grading. If air wires are 6 to 12 percent, it is semi-open gradation. And if air wires are more than 18 percent, then it is open gradation. This open graded friction course like SMA and asphalt treated permeable base are the mixtures with typical gap open gradation where you need very high amount of air wires. Target gradation should deviate from the maximum density line, especially on 2.36 mm C to have better performance. VMA increases as the gradation line moves away from the maximum density line plot, either up or down. Uniform gradation is generally not used for asphalt mixtures. It is often used in portlet cement concrete mixtures. Thank you very much friends for watching this video. You can write your feedback in the comment box.